Welcome to worship. I'm so glad you could join us. I think we all need this time to stop and center ourselves and gather our thoughts together to be present with God, to be present with those of our community. We need this time to stop with all the anxiousness and fear and restlessness in our nation right now. We need this moment to stop, center ourselves, and rest in the holy. Let us pray. Holy One, come among us, come with us, come walk with us. Come walk with us as we walk humbly with you. Be with us, be present with us in this worship as we explore your word, as we are soothed by the music about you, as we learn what it means to walk humbly with you. Amen. God has told you, O human one, what is good. And what does the Lord require of you but to do justice, to love kindness, and to walk humbly with your God? Our second scripture today comes from Matthew 18, 1 through 7. At that time, the disciples came to Jesus and asked, who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? Jesus called a child whom he put among them, and he said, Truly I tell you, unless you change and become like children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Whoever becomes humble like this child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Whoever welcomes one such child in my name welcomes me. If any one of you put a stumbling block before one of these little ones who believe in me, it would be better for you if a great millstone were fastened around your neck and you were drowned in the depth of the sea. Woe to the world because of the stumbling blocks. Occasions for stumbling are bound to come, but woe to the one by whom the stumbling block comes.
I don't know about you, but this has been one of the longest weeks of my life. Probably one of the longest years of my life. And this week has been particularly rough because we're all in this state of unknowing. We don't know what comes next. We don't know what it looks like for what comes next. What we know, what we know is that we are a country that is deeply divided. We are torn into two halves, and it seems like our two parts can't talk to each other, don't want to talk to each other, and feel like the one half is completely wrong. And so what do we do in this space? How do we live into our calling, into our followership of Jesus. That's part of the reason why these last four weeks I wanted to stick with Micah 6 eight. I wanted to let those words bathe me as our country was in the midst of all of this rancor, in this midst of all this fear and anxiety in this midst of deep divisions. I wanted those words to be my balm, to stick with me. God has told you, O human one, what is good? And what does the Lord require of you? But to do justice, to love kindness, and to walk humbly with your God. And so this week, as we wait as we wait, just we wait. We sit with those words, walk humbly with God. Walk humbly with God. And I've been struggling with this phrase, walk humbly with your God. Trying to figure out what does it mean? Because there was no easy answer. Like the last three weeks, I could look up the Hebrew and learn from the rabbis about what this phrase means. But here's the thing about Micah 6.8. The prophet threw in a conundrum for us because the word used here for humbly is only used here. This is the only time it's used in the Bible. There is one other spot where a version of the word is used, and that's in Proverbs 11.2, which says, When pride comes, then comes disgrace, but wisdom is with the humble. So in Proverbs, this word is used in the context of contrasting it with being too prideful, of being so full of yourself. And when you're so full of yourself, you're going to come to a bad end, it says. Wisdom, understanding, truth. With that, there's a sense of humility. Maybe it's because the wiser we get, the more we know we don't know. The wiser we get, the more we understand the human condition. We understand the stories and places of people. The wiser we get, the more we stop and are still. And so when this word then is used in Micah 6, 8, it's used in the context of saying, walk humbly with God. So those first two parts of this, this scripture are about our relationships with other people. That we are to look out at the world and see the problems and figure out how to fix them, to change them, to transform them, to bring them into alignment with the kingdom of love. And along the way, as we see those problems, we're going to encounter people that are in need people who are hurting and in pain, and we're to stop along the way of building the kingdom of love and help those. 
And this final section, this final section puts it clearly into our relationship with God, that it isn't just about seeing the problem, seeing the places and painful places, seeing the places where we need to transform and change, seeing the people who need our immediate help. It's also about how we connect to the Holy, how we walk in relationship to God, to Jesus. And so when I was thinking about this, it reminds me of all those stories told of Jesus where the disciples are gathered around and they're arguing about who's the greatest? Who is the one among us 12? Because they've left out all the women and children that are following, right? They think that the greatest within the kingdom of love is going to be one of them. Maybe it'll be one of the ones that we know more about. Maybe it'll be Matthew, the tax collector. Maybe it will be Peter, the one who always seems to stumble, get to the right answer, but along the way makes mistakes and reminds us of how human he is. Maybe it'll be James and John who seem to be super confident and are super close to Jesus. And so they ask that question, who is the greatest? And what does Jesus do? Jesus doesn't look at the 12 of them. Instead, Jesus goes and finds one of those nameless ones, not one of the nameless women this time. He goes and picks one of the nameless children. He picks that child, brings that child into the midst of them and says, if you want to enter the kingdom of love, you have to change and become like a child. Whoever becomes humble like this child is the greatest in the kingdom of love. Whoever welcomes this child in my name welcomes me. So he, Jesus does the same thing that Proverbs does, right? It takes this idea of pride, who is the greatest, and transforms it and says, that's not what the kingdom of love is about. That's not what God is about. It's about, it's about making yourself smaller. It's about becoming the servant. It's about becoming the least. It's about making sure that that least, whoever you have defined as the least, is given a place. In space. When Jesus invites us into the kingdom of love, Jesus invites us into a walk. Into a walk that is different from the walk of the world. That separates us from the prideful, the greatest, and puts us back in the hurt and the pain, the anxiousness and the fear. That puts us back in the places of need and want that puts us back with those that we look the most down upon. This week, as we learn the news, as more of our story is unfolded, we need to remind ourselves that we are to walk humbly with God, that we're to walk with God in the face of whatever happens, that our job will always and forever be to build the kingdom of love, to seek out justice and to do justice and to provide kindness and to find what is good, to find the kingdom of love and continue to build it, to walk with God on this journey. A journey that won't be easy because whoever is in power, we have to always remember that Jesus is Lord, not Caesar. Doesn't matter who Caesar is, Caesar is not our Lord. Our Lord and our God is the one we walk humbly with and we will have to fight to create a kingdom of love where everyone is welcome, where everyone is wanted, where everyone is recognized as the very breath of God. May you walk humbly with God. Amen.
as we enter into this time of prayer, we're going to pray and we're going to sing. So I invite you to settle in and take some deep breaths. I invite you to breathe in the love of God and breathe out your fears. I invite you to breathe in the love of God and breathe out your worries. I invite you to breathe in the love of God and to breathe out all that is on your heart and on your mind and rest in the love of God. we want to walk we want you to walk with us Jesus we're not comfortable with the path that is set before us we would like a smooth newly paved road with clear markings and bright bold signs telling us what to do warning us of what lies ahead but the journey of discipleship is like a rough mountain path there are rocks and ruts dust dirt and holes there may be wolves or robbers at any turn. We don't know if we dare to risk discipleship if it means struggle. you've called us to rely on your guidance and direction. You remind us that God has never failed us yet. We have been brought to new vistas and new opportunities of service that we never would have encountered on the safe road. And this is because in all our trials, you do walk with us, Lord Jesus. troubles and concerns. Jesus, we need your presence and comfort. We have so many fears and anxieties. Our hearts break and are burdened with the illness and grief of loved ones. We hear the news of disasters and catastrophes in this world and wonder how much of this we can stand. We are still worried about the election. How can we be brought together? How can we see each other as neighbors and fellow travelers? In our troubles and trials, God, remind us that we have your strength on which to rely. As we have faithfully brought before you the names of loved ones in need of your healing and comfort. Remind us that we too are recipients of that same healing love. Strengthen us. Walk with us, Jesus. Lift us high and give us confident strides as we follow your will and your path. Hear us as we pray the prayer that you taught us. 
our Father, who art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We're so glad you joined us for worship. If you'd like to support our ministry, please visit our website, stpaulshinkley.org. Let us pray. God of grace, you invite us to walk humbly with you. Accept these gifts from our hands which are a generous, ever-flowing love, feeding the hungry and helping those in need. Accept these gifts for the work of your church. Amen. And if nobody told you today that I love you, remember that God loves you and always will that Jesus loves you and always will, that I love you and always will. May you spend this week doing justice, loving kindness, and walking with God. Amen. Thank you.